I'm Dr. James Millen. I'm a lecturer at King's College London and my research is on the interface between nanotechnology and quantum physics. And in particular, I work with levitated nanoparticles. No, I was pretty undecided about what I wanted to do uh, for quite a long time. And it was quite a toss up between actually doing physics or something completely different like music. I don't know. But I started a degree in physics and the further I went through it, the more I enjoyed it. So I really enjoyed it. And by the end of my degree, I knew I wanted to try and take it further. And by this point, I'd already become interested in quantum science. So I wanted to know what I could do that it was experimental in quantum physics. So I joined this quite new field, which we called levitated optomechanics. And this was using light to levitate nanoparticles and try and control their motion. And a, a lot of people who were working in this very small community came from a similar background to me, this kind of quantum science and atomic physics background. Um, and that prepared me very well. Uh, I learned how to use lasers. Um, like I said, I learned the language. I learned how to analyze data in the correct way. However, on the other hand, we also learned a lot of bad habits. Um, when you're working with atoms, atoms are like the most perfect, pure quantum thing ever. It's just you write down an equation and that's an atom. And we weren't working with atoms anymore. We were working with big balls of glass, essentially, which are dirty and full of water and imperfections. And we just, I think no one thought about that. And so you can also get a bit lazy. And so that uh, has been an incredible learning journey on actually thinking, well, actually, how does the real world work in an experiment? And uh, what are the real problems you'll face? Yeah. So probably the, the biggest question uh, in the research I do is all about seeing if there's a limit to quantum physics. So we always think of quantum physics, the physics of electrons, single atoms, very, very small objects. Um, in fact, the largest object that's ever been able to show quantum behavior is a molecule made out of about 2000 atoms. Um, and we don't know whether it's just very difficult to see quantum physics in large objects. Um, for example, you can write down what the quantum behavior of the moon would be. Uh, it's just we also experimentally predict it would be almost impossible to ever see that behavior. Or whether fundamentally at some point quantum physics stops working and just becomes, you know, normal physics again. Um, so the big question is, can we do quantum physics with these very large objects? I say very large, uh, they're not, they're maybe, you know, a few hundred nanometers in size, but you know, that's nanotechnology, that's the size of something you can build, that's something inside computer chips, you know, that's, that's technology level. Um, and uh, that's just incredibly exciting to see, see if we find this, this boundary uh, or not. Um, and that would also have applications as well. If you could make such a large object behave in a quantum way, uh, first off, that'd be an incredible experimental challenge. And the reason it's a challenge is because it's so sensitive to disturbance from the environment. But you can flip that on its head and say, well, now my big quantum system is so sensitive to disturbance from the environment, I can use it as a sensor, for example. So in my seminar today, um, I'm going to be talking about working with levitated nanoparticles and um, the field of levitated optomechanics involves using light to control the motion of nanospheres um, and that's an incredibly successful field even though it's new it only started maybe in 2010 and it's successful because light is one of the things we can control the best we can so precisely control light we can focus it down to tiny spots we can make it very low noise and using this way, we can control the motion of these objects so precisely that in fact, just this year, researchers have seen evidence that objects a few hundred nanometers in size can behave in a quantum way. Um, however, the light is also a limitation itself. So the light is used to lift up your nanoscale object, but light is also made of a stream of photons. And each one of these photons gives a small kick to the object and that will disturb the motion and add noise, we would say. Um, and so this is always a problem in quantum mechanics. And the trick is you just keep on turning down your light field lower and lower and lower until you find this perfect trade-off between actually being able to control your object but not adding enough noise. Unfortunately, you can't do that when your object is um, a levitated nanoparticle because the light is not just measuring the particle, it's actually also levitating it. So you can't turn down your light because you're no longer levitating a particle there. So I wondered if we could move away from light altogether 
um, and just work with electric fields. So it's the same technology as you may have heard in something like an ion trap for controlling atomic ions. So I levitate um, charged nanoparticles, which is actually research I started here at UCL as well. Um, and the, my talk today is going to be considering whether we can get these charged nanoparticles and couple them to electrical circuits and even quantum circuits and try and manipulate them in a new way without having to use light, but in a way that's perhaps easier to integrate into, into technology as well. In terms of next steps in my research, there are two major things I want to do. Um, one is to study these processes at the nanoscale I mentioned, so the motion of these nanoparticles uh, when confined in very small spaces. So I'm starting to do experiments where we're building an analogue of biological systems using these levitated nanoparticles uh, to try and understand physical processes which are hard to even solve the equations for. And the other is um, when moving towards technological integration, um, we have to shrink everything down. At the moment, our experiments are big, you know, 30 centimetre square, square steel vacuum chambers on an optical table. Um, and so in our lab, we now have um, experimental setups which are built on a chip. They're just about a centimetre square. Um, and so we're learning how to use these and we're going to trap our first particles in this setup very soon. I think absolutely the best advice is never be afraid to contact people. Uh, no one's ever going to be annoyed by getting an email. If you see people who are doing research you're interested in, drop them an email, ask to have a look at their labs. Even if that's somewhere that you're not currently working, it's, there's a very good chance they will fund you to travel to see their work. We're always interested in interested students. Uh, but that applies throughout your career. Never be afraid to share your ideas with people, to talk to people, to get out there. Um, and otherwise, um, always make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. Uh, don't just stick with it because you feel you're on a career path. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, the job's not going to work out for you. Uh, it only gets harder. <laughs> um, and don't worry about having that big idea. Uh, if you worry about having the big ideas, they won't come to you. Just enjoy your research, be curious, uh, investigate, and the ideas will come on their own.